Hello and welcome to this review of Girls High School Lacrosse Rules. If you've been here before and would like to skip ahead, you can go to the three minute mark to the start of the presentation. My name is Drew Hill. I'm an official and trainer with the East Tennessee Women's Lacrosse Officials Association. This presentation was made in conjunction with the East Tennessee Women's Lacrosse Officials Association and its parent organization, the Tennessee Women's Lacrosse Officials Association. Both organizations are members of U.S. Lacrosse's Tennessee chapter. Today's topic is obstruction of the free space to goal, more commonly referred to as shooting space. This is one of the more difficult concepts for those new to the game to understand, players, parents, and officials included. The goal of this presentation is to help clarify what free space to goal is and when it is and is not to be called. References to accompany this presentation include the 2016 Women's Rulebook, the 2016 Officials Training Manual, and the U.S. Lacrosse Ropes video, Explanation of Shooting Space. The links to the PDF for the Women's Rulebook and to the video are included here and in the notes below. Your feedback is appreciated especially in reference to accuracy and clarity of the presentation. Feel free to suggest additional scenarios you may want depicted. This is not a full depiction of all possible scenarios. For more information, refer to your rule book, the training manual, and the ropes video. Your local U.S. lacrosse chapter may be able to have resources for you to approach, and they also may be able to refer you to a local officials association that may be able to provide input from a U.S. Lacrosse certified women's trainer. Obstruction of the free space to goal is contained or referenced in the rule book as Rule 16, Section 1, Article I, and can be found on pages 45 to 46 of the 2016 Women's Rule Book. With regards to obstruction of free space to goal, the rule book states, with any part of her body, guard the goal outside the goal circle so as to obstruct the free space to goal between the ball and the goal circle, which denies the attack the opportunity to shoot safely and encourages shooting at a player. The obstruction of the free space to goal rule is in effect when the ball is within the critical, critical scoring area and above the goal line extended. This positioning applies only if initiated by the defender and not if she's drawn into the free space to goal by an attacking player. This position applies to a defender, not marking an attack player within a stick's length. Also to note, this call should be made only if the player with the ball has the opportunity to and is looking to shoot. So next up in the presentation, we'll define what shooting space is and then walk through scenarios that will help define when shooting space is applicable and when it is not applicable. So obstruction of free space to goal, it's in effect when the ball is in the fan, again that is the critical scoring area above the goal line extended, and when the offending player is located in the fan. USL's rule book defines free space to goal as a path to goal within the critical scoring area as defined by two lines extending from the ball to the outside of the goal circle. No defensive player will be penalized if positioned below the extension of the goal line. So as that, we've shown the free space to goal area as the area defined by the two red lines extending from the ball to the goal circle. And it includes the area only outside the goal circle defined by those red lines. So in this scenario, the ball handler who is responsible to never shoot when dangerous conditions such as obstruction of free space to goal exist, may be looking to go to goal and score or shoot in this instance. If that's the case, the defensive player located within the free space to goal is obstructing the free space to goal and will be called for that penalty. The penalty will be administered as a major foul and you can reference our prior penalty administration video to see how that would be handled. So if we move over to the left, 
with the ball, you can see how the free space to goal changes in reference to the ball location. In this case, both players would be in a legal position and no foul would be applicable. Same holds true for the, as we shift around, no violation there. And here references the last sentence in the rule book definition where we have a player located below the goal line extended even though they're in the free space to goal as defined in the rules. They are not in violation of the rule. Likewise, the player above the goal circle has maintained their, space, uh, their position outside the free space to goal and have not violated. No call would be made in this case. So when is obstruction of free space to goal in effect? We've got three conditions that have to be met before free space to goal can be called. It's a major foul when this happens. And the, the three conditions include the ball handler with the ball has to be in the fan. The ball handler has to have the opportunity to legally and safely shoot. And the ball handler has to be looking to shoot, not pass or potentially stall for time or continue on behind the, the goal line extended to, to uh, either waste time. They may be up by more goals than they need to win, so they may not be looking to shoot even though um, they have a clear path to goal. In the late elementary school level and the early middle school level, typically coaches will utilize obstruction of free space to goal against inexperienced defensive uh, teams. Defenses haven't caught on and they instruct their attack players without the ball to bunch up in front of the goal circle and draw defensive players into that space. Then they try to free up a, the ball handler utilizing a screen or a legal pick and have them move towards the center of the, the critical scoring area in order to catch defensive players in the free space to goal and thus be awarded a free position shot. This increases their chances for good shots on goal and this uh, assists coaches in having games won. When the ball handler brings the ball across the 12, that is when uh, free space goes into effect. Here in this example, we see the defender marking within a stick's length a defend, uh, an attack player above the goal circle. So while they're still in the free space to goal, there is no violation for this at this point. Play would continue with the ball handler trying to come into the center of the critical scoring area and the defenders have been instructed by their coach when the ball handler breaks free to break to the outside, directly to the sides, or up and out and get away from their defenders and leave them vulnerable to this call. So when the blue player gets to the center and looks to shoot, we would immediately call the obstruction of free space to goal penalty. When defenses catch on to this tactic, they adjust, and that leaves the, uh, the, mid the later middle school teams and the, the early high school teams little options in trying to deliberately get the other team uh, to, be, to violate the free space to goal. In this case, the conditions are the same, but the tactic is a little different. The defender to the right of the goal circle is defending a blue attack player below the goal line extended. That attack player has been instructed when the ball handler is able to clear around a screen to get free and go towards the center of the, the critical scoring area. They've been instructed to draw their defender to the left by moving below the, the goal circle and draw their defender into the shooting space that, that the um, the ball handler is going to create with his new position, with, with her new position, excuse me. When that happens and the ball handler is looking to shoot, because if it weren't for the person in the free space, they would otherwise have a, an opportunity to make a legal free shot. 
uh, safe shot. So this person will be called immediately once the blue player looks to shoot, would be called for obstruction of free space to goal by the official. Note that the red defender on the left side of the free space to goal is approaching the ball handler legally outside the free space to goal in an attempt to get within a stick's length of the, the ball handler and then legally uh, take position in front of her. Scenario one in the rule book states that an attack player is being double or triple teamed, so she does not have the opportunity to safely shoot. Obstruction of free space to goal should not be called. If she shoots, strong consideration should be given to calling dangerous propel. The key here is there's no legal or safe opportunity to shoot. So without that condition being met, anybody within free space to goal should not be penalized for their position. That applies to the, the defender above the goal circle defending the, the a blue attack player below the goal circle because we have two defensive players in legal defending position in front of the ball handler therefore there is no legal opportunity to shoot. As you can see the ball handler tries to move around the screen or around the defensive players and another defensive player comes in to close the gap the ball handler is still unable to shoot between the two defenders that are immediately in front of her and therefore no legal opportunity to shoot exists. If she does shoot, a yellow card should be issued for a dangerous propel depending on uh, the method uh, or how, how our shot is placed. But in most cases, a dangerous propel should be called and a yellow card issued to the attack player with the ball. Scenario two, an attack player has the opportunity to shoot, but is looking to pass to a teammate. Obstruction of free space to goal should not be called. Second condition, they have to be looking to shoot to call shooting space. Here, you may have a defensive breakdown where a attack teammate has gotten free from uh, their defender, or they've had a fast break, and the attack player with the ball is looking to shoot. They may have had a fast break and she may have uh, two defenders closing in to obtain legal defensive position against her and we do not want to disadvantage the offense by administering a foul at this location if the ball handler elects not to look to shoot. So if a fake shot were uh, uh, attempted by the blue player we would whistle the foul immediately but aside from that, we would anticipate that the ball handler is looking to pass to a player that has dropped down to an open passing lane with a more advantageous angle to the goal. Thus, we would not call the foul for the defensive player that is occupying free space to goal. We would allow the pass to be made and then adjust to uh, evaluate the free space to goal that exists now that the ball is in a different position. You may need to uh, realize and be cognizant of the fact that the defender down low at the goal circle does have the opportunity to legally approach the new ball handler outside of free space to goal. So we'll watch that carefully as we adjust to see if we need to make another call during this one, this one play. Scenario three, an attack player is attempting to move toward goal for a shot. Her teammate is within the space to goal with her uh, legally marked defender. The attack does not have an opportunity to shoot. Obstruction of free space to goal should not be called. Again, this the key here is a defender is marking an opponent and they're within a stick's length of an attack player that is in the free space to goal. So the responsibility for the defender to be, the, the defender being in the free space to goal is on the attack player that is also in the free space to goal. Thus, we do not penalize the defender who is legally marked against an attack player in free space to goal for obstruction of free space to goal. Also, we need to realize that the attack player and the defender marking the attack player in free space to goal can move out of the shooting space 
and then the defender is able to break off of that defender she was uh, that that attack player she was defending and legally be able to approach the ball handler without violating the free space to goal rule scenario four an attack player has not controlled the ball and established herself in a viable shooting position when the defense is in the free space to goal when she establishes control the defense has moved out of the free space to goal obstruction of free space to goal should not be called so the key here is no established control and no viable shooting position established by the attack player. In this case, we have potentially a loose ball in the, in the fan that is recovered by an attack player. The attack player has their back to the goal. Therefore, even though they may have established possession and control of the ball, they are not in viable shooting position. Therefore, the shooting space defined with the location of the ball the defender in that space should not be called for obstruction of free space to goal. That player must establish a viable shooting position once they gain control of the ball for the rule to be in, uh, in effect. In this scenario, the ball handler that has established control but not a viable position decides to pass the ball to somebody at the 12 Scenario 5, an attack player at the 12 meter has received and controlled the ball and turns toward the goal with the opportunity to shoot. A defender is playing zone defense outside the 8 meter arc, not within a stick's length of any attackers, and within the free space to goal. Obstruction of free space to goal should be called. So this is just a defender playing off of the ball and off of the, the person with the ball when they have gained control and are in viable position for a legal and, and safe shot. Pass is made to the 12 meter. The player enters the 12 meter with the ball. The shooting space is defined and the defensive player has not approached to within a stick's length of the ball handler. Even though they're at the eight, the shooting space violation is called. Note that the attacker within a stick's length, or excuse me, the defender, within a stick's length of an attacker, while in shooting space, is still not obstructing free space to goal because she is legally marked up against one attacker. And as a note, the defense, defense players who are double or multi, multiple teaming a player without the ball and are within the stick's length are exempt from the obstruction of free space to goal. They must, however, continue to abide by the three-second rule. This just differentiates between fouls that are in effect or violations that are in effect while you're legally guarding a non-ball handler on the attack. We, here we show three defensive players, two of whom are located within the eight-meter arc, all legally guarding within a stick's length an attack player without the ball. This makes them exempt from any call uh, within the free space to goal. However, only one person is exempt when they are guarding a non-ball handler within the 8-meter arc. All other players in the 8-meter arc on the defensive team that are marking a non-ball handling attack player can be called for three seconds if they remain in the 8-meter arc on that ball handler for more than three seconds. That was a quick uh, review. Hopefully we have more detailed ones to come, but that should uh, hopefully help with your understanding. Feel free to comment in the comment sections and we'll see you next time.